Okay, so maybe you shouldn't run your AC off the batteries. But I think we can all agree that batteries are really essential for our RV or boat experience. Now, from what we've seen, most people have the stock battery meter. And when we were when we were looking for new RVs, this was pretty much the standard battery meter that most of the new ones came with. It might not have looked exactly like this, but they were all made by the same company, and they all had the same four LED layout. So today I'm going to show you how this thing works, why we chose to put an external battery monitor on our RV, why we chose the Victron, and how to install it on our 2020 Tab 400. So first things first, keeping your batteries alive and keeping your batteries healthy are slightly different things. Keeping your batteries alive means actually having power in them to run your electronics. Keeping them healthy means that you keep them to a point where they can be recharged fully every single time. Not all batteries are built the same. Today I'm going to cover three different standard types of batteries that are found in most types of RVs or boats. Flooded lead acid batteries, AGM batteries, or lithium batteries. Each has their own pros and cons that I'll quickly go through. First though, let's talk about keeping your batteries healthy, amp hours, and depth of discharge. This is going to get a bit technical, but I'll try to keep it short. Amp hours is the capacity measurement for your batteries. It tells you how much power you have available. It's akin to the size of the gas tank in your car. Depth of discharge is the amount of energy measured in amp hours that you draw off a battery from full or 100% charged. If you go beyond the maximum depth of discharge, you could permanently damage your battery, so you probably want to avoid that. At least we do. Going back to the gas tank analogy, unlike a car that you can run down to empty, aka 100% discharged, batteries can only safely be run down to 50 to 80% discharged depending on the kind of battery you have. Now, let's go back to the three kinds of batteries. The maximum depth of discharge for lead acid batteries is 50%. For AGM batteries, it's somewhere between 50 and 70%, and for lithium batteries, it's 80%. That means that a 100 amp hour lithium battery actually has more usable power than a 100 amp hour flooded lead acid battery. So we know about depth of discharge and that you should never run your batteries, aka the gas tank, down to empty. That means you should know, with some confidence, the discharge of your batteries at any given time. To do this, we need a battery monitor. Now let's go back to this stock monitor. It has four lights indicating charge, good, fair, and low. What does good or low actually mean, and how does it relate to the depth of discharge that we just talked about? Well, the stock monitor uses the voltage of the battery to determine the LED light to illuminate. Unfortunately, the stock monitor doesn't know what kind of batteries you have installed. It's programmed to light up the LEDs at default voltage levels, which might not line up with the type of batteries that you own. To keep things simple, let's look at our three kinds of batteries, figure out what a fully charged voltage is, and then figure out what the lowest safe voltage would be for each. For the lead acid battery, a fully charged battery is 12.7 volts. 50% depth of discharge is 12.2 volts. That means we never want to get below 12.2 volts. Similarly, for the AGM battery, 100% full is 12.85 volts, and 50% depth of discharge is 12.35 volts. Finally, the lithium battery, 100% full is 14.4 volts, and 80% depth of discharge is around 13.6 volts. So now we know the upper and lower bounds for our battery. Back to the stock meter. I said that the four lights are just voltage readings, but what are they actually? I had to do some digging on the manufacturer's website, but after a while I found the specs. Charge is 12.7 volts, good is 12.1, fair is 11.6, and low is 6 volts. Let's uplevel this a bit. How do these LEDs tell you the state of your batteries? If you have a flooded lead acid battery, then you never want it to get below 12.2 volts. If the stock battery monitor hits good, then you've actually hurt your battery. That means that's at 12.1, it's too low. If you have an AGM or lithium battery, it's the same story. If the monitor ever says good, fair, or low, you've actually permanently damaged your battery. So, what do you do? Well, you really need to install a real battery monitor. In my case, I chose to install this Victron Energy Battery Monitor on my 2020 Tab 400. So this right here is the box for the BMV712 battery monitor, and I'll go through why I picked this specific unit later in the video, but for now, let's go over to where the batteries are, and I'll show you how I installed this thing. Okay, so installing the battery monitor is actually pretty easy once you get around to it. There are three main parts to this Victron Energy battery monitor for, that we're going to install today. What we have is the head unit, which reports out the voltage, 
the percentage discharge of your battery and some other interesting information. There's the shunt, which does all the heavy work of measuring how much power is discharged from your battery. And then depending on which kit you buy, there's either a positive probe, which connects to the positive lead of your battery to power the whole thing, or there's a temperature probe, which also does the same stuff, but it measures the temperature of your batteries at the same time, so you can monitor that as well. So, the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out where the batteries are in your RV. In our case, the batteries are sitting right below me in the center of our bed. So I'm going to open that up and then we'll see what we have installed here. Okay, just to review now that we have the battery compartment open, and it really was just as easy as you saw, four screws on this RV, I have two 6-volt batteries made by Harris. They're AGM batteries. For the purposes of installing this battery monitor, the two 6-volt batteries basically act like one big 12-volt battery. So I have my main negative terminal here, and my main positive terminal right there. Now before you do any of this, disconnect the power. Now that means if you're hooked up to shore power you need to disconnect the AC from the shore power. If you have solar, make sure to do this somewhere shady or put some cardboard over your solar panels because they will be generating voltage even if you have the batteries disconnected and you don't want that. And then finally if you have a battery disconnect switch turn that off as well. Once all of that is done is disconnect the negative and the positive battery leads by disconnecting those two nuts right there. In our case, the main positive and negative battery terminals both go from the batteries here, go through this grommet, and they go into this main distribution block right there. From the main distribution block, they go out to the WIFCO inverter, they go out to the inverter right here, and they go to the individual DC electronics to power them directly. Once you have the batteries completely disconnected, take the other end of the, of the main negative battery cable and connect it to one end of the shunt. In ours, the, grom the main battery cable goes through a grommet, comes up to the shunt, and then stops in the shunt right there. The only other cable that you'll need in this install is a small battery cable that goes from the other end of the shunt to the main distribution block. At that point, you have power back to your main distribution block, and the whole thing's operating like normal. Once you have these two cables connected, let's start connecting the positive voltage cable. When you bought the kit, it came with this little wire right here. It's either a one wire or two wire probe. You put one of the lugs on the main positive cable. You run that wire through the same grommet that the positive wire comes out and you connect that into the shunt as well. Finally, you want to connect the head unit. This connection is actually just a little telephone wire, ethernet wire, that plugs right into the shunt, the side of the shunt. Once you have that plugged into the, si the back side of your battery monitor, you're done with the install of the battery monitor itself. Okay, and with that, you're done. You've actually done all the hard stuff. Now, you're probably wondering, where do you actually put the battery monitor itself? You saw that I said connect the Ethernet, the telephone wire, to the back side of the shunt, and you connect the other side to the battery monitor, but then you need to install the battery monitor somewhere. If you want to, you can run that telephone wire up above the cabinets over to the monitoring panel where all the other monitors are, but in my case, there's one special thing about the BMV712 monitor, and that's really why I chose it, is that it has Bluetooth. So I just decided to leave the monitor underneath the bed here. I just coiled up the cable, secured the monitor so it doesn't bounce around during travel, and I connect to the monitor through my phone. And that makes setup and reading the battery a lot easier. It gives you a lot more information than, than that little LCD screen can provide you. So now let's look at this thing and configure the battery monitor. You need to tell it what kinds of batteries you have so that it knows how much power is going in and out of the batteries and it can tell you what percentage is left of them. This is where I told you you need to know what kind of batteries you have in your RV and you want to look it up on Google or the manufacturer's website. The first thing that the Victron app is going to show you is it's going to ask you to connect to the battery monitor itself. This is all done over Bluetooth. If you have a Tab 400 like we do with the optional solar package, You'll also see that the Victron app connects directly to the Victron Smart Solar Controller, which is the default solar controller, I think in the 2019, maybe in the 2018s and beyond, Tab 400 trailers. 
But for today, we're just going to look at the Smart BMV battery monitor. Mine is already configured for these batteries, but I'll show you the settings that I have. And I'll put these settings into the description, so if you have a Tab 400, you can just copy them directly. So now let's look at the Victron app itself, so you can see some of the features they have available to it. First, and most importantly, is it tells you the percent charge of the battery. It also tells you some really interesting things to tell you how much time it's going to take you to charge your batteries and how much time you have left to discharge your batteries. If you weren't connected to shore power, it would tell you either days, hours, or minutes left until your batteries were down to zero. The other interesting things in here is you can see consumed amp hours. You can actually go around and figure out which devices consume a lot of power and which devices don't consume much power at all. And then finally, if you have the temperature probe installed, it also shows you the temperature of your batteries. The hotter that batteries get, the worse that they perform. So you do want to monitor your batteries and make sure that they don't overheat. Now for the final topic. Why did we pick this monitor? Well, first off, I like how it has simple at-a-glance stats about your system, but also has details as well and has logging features. If we ever need to dig into some weird power draw issue on our RV, I'm sure this will be very helpful. Second, the other kind of monitor that seems to be popular in the tab community is the kind that plugs into your cigarette lighter and it displays a voltage. They're cheaper and probably accurate, but then you still have to do the math in your head of figuring out what voltage relates to what percentage discharge your battery. They're better than the stock meter for sure, but it seems like only a partial solution to me. Third, and this is the last reason, is that we already had one Victron device from the factory in the solar charge controller. I like the simplicity of having two devices that I knew would work together, and we can always add more compatible devices in the future. Hopefully this video has helped you out. I know there's other high quality monitors out there, and I focused on the Victron one, but if you found one that works for you, let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe, hit the like button, all that good stuff. It really helps us out with YouTube recommending us to more viewers. Both Julie and I will be back next week with our trip out to the Washington coast. See you next time.